everyone, this is Willa Lace. I'm here with my beautiful antique porcelain. And today I have this very charming pink tea and coffee set. It was made by Flight Bar and Bar in about 1815, maybe 1820. And Flight Bar and Bar were the continuation of the famous Worcester factory. And then later in the 19th century, they changed their name again to Royal Worcester. And that may be the name that you know best. And I'll give you a bit more of a close up here. You can see that there are six teacups and six coffee cups and a beautiful big bowl and two plates. And that's pretty much a full tea set. It's not a tea service because it doesn't have its own teapot. So I have added the silver tea set. And this is what a lot of people would have done at the time because porcelain teapots were very, very expensive. Now I'm going to show you a few things. One of them is that this beautiful big bowl here is, I, I've used it to put some French eclairs in, um, and it's perfect for that or for scones or fruit, uh, or you could of course use it for something totally different, keep your receipts or something. But this bowl is called a slop bowl. And what it was for was that we all know the use of the tea strainer. But did you know that the tree strainers only came around in about the year 1900, so the turn of the century? So it's something like, a bit like, you know, the suitcase on wheels. It took until the 1980s, I think, until people actually thought, well, we might as well put wheels under these heavy suitcases. Same thing with tea strainers. Before that time, what people did is they would pour the tea leaves and all and then of course you wouldn't drink all of your tea you would leave the bottom of the cup and then you would pour it out into the slop bowl it was for the slop and then you would get your second helping so this set was made in the regency period uh, it's very regency style it has lots of gilt on it and uh, most sets in that period had hand-painted flowers. This one doesn't, and I'll tell you more about why later. This is actually quite unusual that all the teacups and all the coffee cups have their own saucer. Because usually in this period, they would come as a trio with a teacup and a coffee cup sharing one saucer. Because, you know, you would never drink tea and coffee at the same time, would you? So although the owner of this set um, didn't splash out on a teapot, or perhaps the teapot got broken. Um, they did actually splash out on extra sauces, which is quite unusual. And then I'm going to show you another detail. Uh, see, these teacups and coffee cups, of course, have handles, or ears, some people call them. And uh, that's how we know them. But in the 18th century, uh, people didn't have handles on them. They, had, they were tea bowls and they came in deep saucers. And the teacups weren't really there to drink from. They were there to measure the very expensive tea and then you would pour it into the saucer and drink it from that. But then what do you do with your spoon, right? Your dirty spoon that you don't want to put onto the beautiful table. Well, you had the spoon tray for that or sometimes a spoon basket. Just a, a little device that you could put the spoons in. So this is a little porcelain basket that is per perfect as a spoon tray. I think it, it was probably meant to be a spoon tray. Uh, they also come more flat. So, and while you're watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, please press subscribe. Um, you will get my videos every week that way. And also it really helps me because I will get more privileges from YouTube to bring more content to you. The more subscribers I have, the more I'll be able to reach out to you. So please press subscribe. And then one more thing to know is um, you can see the color pink here. It's slightly different on each item. And that is because it was very difficult to fire. The color pink uh, has to be put on top of the glaze. It can't be under the glaze. So therefore it also gets worn a little bit more. And you can see that here is slightly worn. Um, but it was very difficult to fire because if you get the temperature of the kiln slightly wrong, it comes out as some ugly brown. It's the same with the color yellow. So it was very expensive to fire because a lot of them, uh, of course, they couldn't get the temperature right. They didn't have electronic control systems. 
it was all done just you know the, the fireman the, the guy who was responsible for the fire in the kiln had to just sort of go on his instinct it was a very difficult job and whenever the temperature was wrong everything would come out brown and you'd have to start all over again so although this this pink set doesn't have any hand painted flowers uh, it does have beautiful hand applied um, gilt it's very very beautifully hand gilded it has a very expensive and difficult to fire pink which would be quite a sensation so it was probably a very expensive set at the time this was potted very robustly and there are some chips here and there um, here's one for instance there are some chips but to be honest it's it's uh, the set the whole set is in quite good condition and the nice thing about this is that you don't have to be afraid that it will just break very easily you can really use a set like this and this is what i love about these sets from the 1820s and 1830s they're so robust so i hope you enjoyed this uh, if you did you can find me on youtube every week please press subscribe and you can find me on instagram every single day uh, i post pictures and write historical pieces about porcelain antique porcelain every single day uh, you can find my web shop at gentlerattleofchina.com and hope to see you again next week thank you for watching